So thank you for being brave and thank you for being here. And uh, later on, I'll say something when you are starting your talk. Yeah. Uh, today, um, uh, we dedicate this day, uh, the International Women's Day, of course, to our mothers. My mother uh, died when she was almost 100 years. She never been to school. She had 10 kids who died when they were little. And the older one grew up, and uh, my sisters, four of them, they are, they are older. They never been to school. They were married at, uh, I don't know, six, I don't even remember, 14, 16, 17. Each one left. Two of them died later, leaving about 12 kids behind. And then uh, there are two still there. Uh, I don't even know how many <laughs> nephews and nieces I have. They are all over the place, in New York, in <laughs> Goldman Sachs, or God know wherever. They are all over the place. So, but now, I, what I found that it, the key is education. Uh, because my elder brother, he had three. I have two. My two younger brothers have no two <coughs> So education is the key. Education is the key. And uh, as Madiba said, education is the most powerful weapon for liberation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I thought about saying something about uh, Mama Vini, and then I couldn't really find it. I, I didn't sleep last night. <laughs> then I started thinking about the alphabet. Every alphabet, actually, you can write a book about it. If you take A, she was the most admired <laughs> person in South Africa, in throughout Africa, and those who knew the, the value of liberation. She was admired, she was amazing, she was, you know, just, you can just go on. And if you think about B, she was the most brave person in South Africa. You know, people fought, people went to jail, but she stayed, she was brave, and she was braving everyone. She braved the system, the state, the boss, uh, not your company, <laughs> but the, you know, <laughs> the Bureau of the State, security, torture security, that killed the uh, people like uh, Stephen Biko, Chris Hani, and so on. So, if you go to C, C was celebrated, and C is still celebrated. I have a bunch of articles from Swetons to uh, BBC and The Guardian. If you see what the South Africans say about her, and those who were working for her and around her, you just get amazed. She was celebrated. She was creative. You see, when she was exiled into a remote area, she had her cow to feed the kids. Mm -hmm. She was so creative. And then she turned, just like the comrades turned Robben Island into a university, she turned everywhere she went into a university. She mobilized the people, and she organized the people, and she made apartheid panic. Mm -hmm. If you go to D, she was daring, she was deserving, she was whatever you can imagine about that. I mean, she was the most daring person, she was, de she defied apartheid, she was banned, banished, brutalized, but she divide, uh, 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 defied apartheid and came back home and led the people and made apartheid unworkable and the state ungovernable. This is how South Africa got liberated and thanks to her and her leadership. Mm -hmm. And if you continue, I mean, he is the most estimated person, <laughs> whatever, you can just continue. I, I, I went all the way to Z and then I started to use the Danish. <laughs> you know, uh, and, uh, but there is no time for that. But it's just, just that you imagine a person, uh, you know, a young woman with two uh, young kids, two years old, mm. were left behind and was, were told that your husband would come back feet first. And you could see the island from there. We want my wife sitting there. We were at Table Mountain, and we were always working on uh, what you call the Robin Island. Mm -hmm. I said, this is where the guys were. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just amazing. It's amazing, you know. All this brutalization, <coughs> betrayal from her friends, from the people she trusted, they couldn't break her. <coughs> she was unbreakable. 
So that why when she, she I, I, I actually don't even say past because he's living forever. So when she made the transition to join the ancestors, to join Madiba and join everyone there, what young people said about her. That's how we measure a leadership, a popular politician. Not how much money they have or private jets, but how they are loved. <coughs> and you know, she was, on, I think, as far as I know, the only one who stayed with Sueto until she made the transition on the 2nd of April last year. So this is a source of inspiration that you can defy, you can break, uh, you can destroy the statu quo, which was, uh, you know, apartheid, the most systematic racist system that actually, according to which, if you don't break the law, I, I mean, you have to break the law. If you don't break the law, actually, you are doing something illegal. If you connect with all the people who are different from you, then you are really, you have, you have to break the law. So she defied the law because he knew that unjust law should be break, uh, broken, should be defied. Uh, for me, um, I mean, I, I, I never forget this. Uh, more than 30 years ago, I read her book, Part of My Soul. And then also when she told when she was banished and put in solitary confinement, um, uh, for six months, leaving her kids behind. Two, maybe, uh, 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 Zinan was four years old, something like that. Very small kids. What would you do if that happens to you? When your husband or wife taken away into prison and told that this person would never come back, and you are left with kids, and then you also <coughs> take them away at night and let, leave these kids behind. And you have nothing, nobody to talk except the Bible. So I said she should have been a priest because he read the Bible, I don't know, many hundred times, you know. So, so but again, uh, I, I, we don't mourn Mama Winnie, but we celebrate her life. And uh, thank you very much for coming here and for joining us. Thank you for South Africa for the collaboration. And thank you, Sarah Omar, for coming here and for everyone for being here. And also we have Helga coming all the way from uh, Turbi or Helga coming all the way from Iceland to make her speech and all of you here. And uh, of course, above all, the people have been working to prepare this. Crossing the order people, students, friends uh, who have made food, who have prepared this place. And uh, we have food from 15 different countries. Normally you don't have this collection of countries together from, uh, from uh, Nepal to Korea, from Japan to uh, UK or Trinidad, you know, all over the world, it seems. that is also crossing borders. So as we make a, uh, says, we need this kind of place where you look at the crowd that reflect the real world, not just white guys, but real world where you have to mix, because the more we mix, the more we benefit. You know, even Darwin, they say that uh, what he said about survival of the fittest. The fittest was the one who could bond with others. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm.